Sophie Hirsch, a New York-based journalist, states in one of her articles that, quote, from Columbus Day to Independence Day to Thanksgiving, the U.S. pretty much specializes in taking dates that celebrate genocide and discrimination and repackaging them as family-friendly holidays. So as Thanksgiving approaches, you may be wondering exactly why Thanksgiving is bad. Not only is Thanksgiving offensive to indigenous people, but it glorifies colonialism, slavery, and even epidemics. Many Americans who celebrate Thanksgiving have no idea just how cruel the holiday's origins are. While those who do may uh, choose to either boycott the holiday or just use it as an excuse to express general gratitude, gather with family, and eat comfort foods, here's a look into the true history of Thanksgiving and what really went down between the pilgrims and Native Americans whose land they stole. You know, this line of thought is not uncommon, and it's being taught in thousands of classrooms across America to destroy our nation's strength by destroying our foundations. Now, we will be debunking this revisionist history on today's program, and, and and I like history. I, I really do. I'm, I'm a fan of, of studying our, our history, and there truly is some fascinating history in today's show. And we're going to be discussing this and more right after this break. Welcome to today's show. I'm your host, Zach Drew. And I am Josh Peck. Well, happy Thanksgiving, Zach. Happy Thanksgiving. I, I think this is going out. Most people will be able to see it before Thanksgiving, unless you're watching on, on any of the networks, and it's going to be just after Thanksgiving. But if you're watching this before Thanksgiving, this will be one of the shows that will provide a lot of interesting conversation over the dinner table. Um, but before we get into it, I want to give a quick fundraising update. I want to thank Stephanie. Uh, I want to thank your generous gift from Karen. Uh, I want to thank Carol and Kenneth and Robert and Rosalinda who gave to our fundraiser. I explained last week that we really do have a great need um, at the end of for the end of this year to continue on television. We do not want to go to just social media alone. We're not ready for that. We need to continue our TV contracts with the PTL Television Club to stay on Roku and Apple TV and just, just to stay on Comcast everywhere that, that we are. And so right now, we have raised a total of $1,673. So we have a fantastic way to go. And I'm, and I'm just praying there are thousands of people that watch the content every single week. And I'm praying that that the majority of you get involved. This this isn't, uh, like I said, this isn't one of those, you know, we, we're doing a fundraiser, but yet if it doesn't come through, we've got it all covered. We need your help to stay on the air for the year of 2024. So if you want to get involved and you believe in what we're doing here at IGBY International Ministries and the Zach Drew Show, go online to ZachDrewShow.com and click that bright orange donate button. From there, you can either give through PayPal or Tithely, which is a Christian payment service. You can also give through the mail. You can send it to the Zach Drew Show, P.O. Box 797, Decatur, Illinois 62525, or you can simply just call 888-459-5727. That's 888-459-5727. We've got to raise this money before the new year, which is just about five weeks away. So please, I'm asking, get involved today. All right, let's let's get into it. 
why should we follow the founding fathers? They, you know, they treated the Indians so wrong. And the Indians, well, they have better morals. That's who we should have followed. Now, that is what is portrayed in modern uh, a- academia. That's, that's what is said. And it's being taught in thousands of schools now, uh, including in like, you know, massive projects like the 1619 Project, which thousands and thousands of classrooms throughout America are teaching right now. They claim essentially uh, states that the founders were evil with wicked morals because of how they treated the indigenous people. And that just is not true. I want to take some time and correct the false narrative of the pilgrims and Indians. There have been many publications, right, about the evils of the pilgrims. You know, the, the pilgrims, they, they killed the Indians, and so they were really bad, and, well, we shouldn't celebrate Thanksgiving. And every single one of these articles, they're written by revisionists, bent on destroying the pilgrims' legacy to rid us of the fact that we were founded on Christian principles. And something to note, it's like, okay, well, those are just some pretty general statements that all the articles you're reading about revision history, they're, they're, they're all wrong. Well, here, here's the thing. You will notice a common denominator in all of these articles that vilify the, that vilify the pilgrims. No footnotes. None. And the few that mention sources are taken from publications no earlier than the 1990s. Opinion pieces. That is what they are. It, and it, it, here's the thing, it, it's, it, we're in the midst of writing a, an explosive book, and we're not going to get into it right now, but in our book right now, we're at about 190 pages. How many footnotes are in our book? Oh, two, three hundred, somewhere around two there. Two or three hundred footnotes. Yeah, and, the, and the thing is this, it is just absolutely common sense that if you were studying an era of American history to get resources from that era, right? It's just, it's just common sense. Journals, letters, personal diaries, speeches that have been written down. The truth about pilgrims. I want to take some time today, and I want to go through a few paragraphs of an amazing article from historians over at wallbuilders.com. Did you know that state historians affirm that the official peace between the pilgrims and the Indians was the longest on record. They have found no record of any treaty that lasted longer than the 54 years of the Pilgrim Treaty from 1621 to 1675. Furthermore, when the treaty was eventually broken in 1675 during King Philip's War, it was the Indians not the pilgrims who violated it. You see, the pilgrims and their Indian neighbors, the Wampanoag, entered into a peace treaty in 1621, experiencing good relations with the tribe and a strong friendship with their chief, Massasoit. In 1623, he informed the pilgrims, right? So the chief, that's their friend, informed the pilgrims of a treacherous assault to be made against them by the Massachusetts tribe, which was gathering other chiefs for a surprise attack. Facing potential extermination, Pilgrim Miles Standish led a preemptive strike, thus saving the colonists. Without this, the Pilgrim story could have been as short-lived as that of the colonists at Roanoke, Virginia. Good relations continued between the Pilgrims and the Wampanoag, but the next period of tension with other tribes occurring in the 1637 Pequot War. Now, understand this. The Pequot War, the Pequot people were warlike and aggressive, even against their neighbor Indian neighbors on every side, which included the Wampanoag, allies and friends of the Pilgrims, the Narragansett, the Algonquian, and the Mohegan. Now, the Pequot had established a trading monopoly. So the aggressive tribe had established a trading monopoly with the Dutch, which the arrival of the English threatened. 
so they determined to rid the region of the English. After killing some English settlers, the colonists responded and organized strikes against the Pequot. The war spread across much of Connecticut and also threatened the Plymouth and Massachusetts Bay colonies. The conflict ended when Sassacus, the chief of the Pequot, was pursued and killed by the Mohegan and Mohawks. You see, the pilgrims lived in harmony with the Wampanoags from the time of their 1621 treaty through the 1623 and 1637 conflicts. And until the long peace finally collapsed in 1675 with King Philip's war, uh, no, as wall builders stated that today, revisionist scholars such as James D. Drake, Daniel Mandel, uh, Jill Lepore claim that this conflict was the result of Indians pushing back against greedy land grabbing colonists with the Indians simply, you know, trying to regain territory that was rightfully theirs. But such a portrayal, once again, is wrong. For example, Pilgrim Governor Josiah Winslow avowed that at the outbreak of the war, he said this, quote, I think I can clearly say that before these present troubles broke out, the English did not possess one foot of land in this colony, but what was fairly obtained by honest purchase of the Indian proprietors. Did you know that when William Penn was given Pennsylvania, he said, quote, well, it belonged to the Indians I need to buy from them. So he was given the land from the king and he said, I got to give the Indians money. Pennsylvania had to buy the land from three different tribes because one tribe would say, well, you bought it from them, but they stole it from us. Okay, well, well, I'll buy it from you too. And the other tribe said, wait a minute, they, they stole it from us before they, they got it. And then they had to buy it from them as well. So if that is the case, and that is how it was actually done, then the purpose of King Philip's war was not an excuse for the colonists to steal as much land from the Indians as possible. Well, then what's the real reason for King Philip's war between the pilgrims and the early settlers and the Indians? The actual reason for King Philip's war after much time in this treaty had elapsed, the unconverted Indians began to hate what the gospel of Jesus Christ was doing to their Indian brothers and sisters. Indians were getting saved because of the missionaries. And the power of the Holy Spirit through the word of God was changing them. Just like it says in Romans chapter 8, verse 28 through 30, it says, and we know that in all things, God works for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. For those God foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his son, that he might be the firstborn among many brothers and sisters. And those he predestined, he also called. Those he called, he also justified. Those he justified, he also glorified. But there in verse 29, to be conformed into his image. That is what was taking place in large part throughout many different tribes of the indigenous people. 2 Corinthians 3.18, And we all, with unveiled face beholding the glory of the Lord, are being transformed into the same image from one degree of glory to another. For this comes from the Lord, who is the Spirit. You know, I've said this many times on the program, and it's just something that has really, it's not just head knowledge, it's really... It's really just, it's in my heart. And that's why I just think about it. I probably think about it on a weekly basis. How I imagine our lives here on earth and throughout eternity as just this massive, elaborate mosaic. Like we are these beautiful, Christ-inspired mosaics. And as we are being eternally changed into the image of Christ, we continuously cast off our old selves right? This process of sanctification. And we become more like Jesus. We become less like our old self and become more like Jesus. And it's a process. It doesn't happen overnight. It's, it's one small piece at a time. And as 
more pieces are placed, the image becomes clearer and clearer. How we're being transformed in the image of Jesus. You see, we were created to worship and glorify God. And as we spend time with God, we are continuously transformed into his image. And this, this old, nasty, sinful man is slowly being transformed into the image of Christ for the glory of God. A, a, a natural byproduct for the Christian worshiping Jesus, spending time with our Lord and Savior, is that you become more like him. Whatever you worship, in life, you naturally become more like. And, and, and you'll know if, if you are spending time with God because change does occur. And it's impossible for the Christian to spend time in the presence of God without, without it changing us. And it's, like I said, another piece of the mosaic is placed over the old man. Sanctification. And the same thing, the same change that occurs within us today through the gospel was taking place in that day with the Indians converting to Christ. And the unconverted Indians hated the change they saw in their fellow Indian brothers and sisters. And I'm going to get into that. And, that, and that's scriptural too. Matthew 10, 22 says, And you will be hated by all for my name's sake, but the one who endures to the end will be saved. 2 Timothy 3, 12, Indeed, all who desire to live a godly life in Christ Jesus will be persecuted. So what did the Indians do? They decided to attack the colonists. In short, the cause for the war were Christian missionaries. Let's read about this in the article. So prior to becoming Christians, Indians often engaged in immoral practices such as the prolonged barbarous torture of captives. Missionaries sought to end such practices by converting Indians and teaching them Christian morals. Missionaries, including John Elliott, Thomas Mayhew, and Andrew White, worked extensively with various tribes and had great success in converting Indians to Christianity. By 1674, Elliott's Christian villages of praying Indians in Massachusetts alone numbered as many as 3,600 converts. It was in the following year, 1675, that the Medicom, fearing that Christianity would change Indian culture, launched a ferocious surprise assault against settlers in the region, seeking to exterminate all English colonists in Rhode Island, Connecticut, and Massachusetts. King's Philip's War cannot be accurately characterized as Indians versus the English. However, for many of those attacked were themselves Indians. And why? because they were Christian Indians. They, like the settlers, were targeted, hurt, or killed by their unconverted brethren. To secure their own lives and safety, many of the converted Indians fought side by side with the colonists throughout the conflict. And the war eventually ended when Medicom was killed by another Indian. Now, it is true that pilgrims and Puritans killed Indians, but it was in the context of a just and defensive war. You see, this is the actual story of our history. Now, and, and, and not to say that we don't have warts uh, in our past, but this is the, the true story. You know, people want to say that we're all on stolen land. We killed and murdered the indigenous people from the onset. And that's just not true. That only started whenever we had well, whenever Andrew Jackson got involved. Yeah, and of course, we're not saying that no land was ever uh, stolen from the Indians. That actually did happen, just not in the way that most schools teach nowadays. So in the 19th century, so this would be way after the Pilgrims, Andrew Jackson had some Indian removal policies that violated property rights, and those policies became more common. Uh, Indians were forcibly removed from their lands in Georgia, Louisiana, Mississippi, and other places in the Southeast. Uh, but many people probably have heard the term manifest destiny, which was a growing belief at the time that it was America's destiny to spread West and nothing could or should stop it. And that included Indians. So they abandon a biblical belief of how private property ownership should be handled and adopted the possession is nine tenths of the law view. 
So basically anyone could just take land and that person would be its rightful owner regardless if Indians were living there first or not. Now again, most of this occurred around 200 years after the pilgrims. So we're not going all the way on you know, the other end uh, and saying that it didn't happen. It certainly did, but as with everything the left tries to teach in schools, there's a lot more to the story. That's right. You see, revisionist historians are re-educating our nation. Why? To dismantle every value that we hold dear as Americans. That, to, to demonize every hero of our country's history and, and undermine everything they believed in. To, to demoralize America. To usher in a post-capitalistic, atheistic society that will be easy for the globalists to control. A strong America is the last thing that stands in the way of a global order. So America must fall. They must destroy the old to make way for the new. And why is this so important for Christians to understand? Because the bedrock of our nation's history, our law, our culture, it is Christianity. We, Christians, are the enemy of Marxists. You know, it's like, oh, the enemy is to Marxists is, is the oppressors. It's the white man. It's capital. The enemy is Christianity. That is the final foundational pillar that they are coming for is Christianity. Make no mistake about it. And make no mistake that persecution is coming. So we absolutely need to be steadfast in our faith, standing strong on the word and, and fortified by his Holy Spirit. We've got to be ready for what's coming. You know, I, I'm just reminded that, you know, the heroes today, you know, I, for example, we talked about a couple of weeks ago, Gavin Newsom suing an entire school district. Why? Because in their curriculum, they wanted to make a hero out of Harvey Milk, which was nearly 40 years old. He was, he's a, document a relationship with a teenage boy. He's a pedophile. And they wanted his biography in there to, to remember the history of the LGBT community, to put him on a pedestal, to make him a hero. And one school district, they, they said, no, we're not teaching our kindergartners about Harvey Milk. And what did they do? They sued the school district. And the school district, they, they bowed out. They said, okay, we will teach it. That, that's sickening. It, it's going to... That school district, they didn't consider the cost. Mm -hmm. Because we're going to be entering into a stage in American history where the cost truly is everything. It's everything. Revisionists are not re revising our history to make us seem more Christian than we actually are, but less. They are revising to a specific narrative. That's why, you know... They've got to protect our foundation. Columbus was a wicked man. America wasn't founded at the signing of the Declaration of Independence, but when the first chattel slaves arrived in America. That's why they're teaching our kids, kindergartners and first and second and third graders, comprehensive sex ed. That's why thousands of schools throughout America are promoting the 1619 Project that, that you know, America's founding had nothing to do with the Founding Fathers, but it had everything to do with, with the first chattel slaves arriving in America. Critical race theory. Like we covered today, the pilgrims and our Founding Fathers and how they were genocidal villains wiping out the Indians. Revisionists. And the common denominator, all Marxists. And they all have a clear disdain for Christianity. Listen, this was... Uh, this was kind of a deep show for, you know, our Thanksgiving show, but it's what we do here. And, you know, to to expose the wicked deeds that are in darkness, to to bring them to light that I'm just I get angry that they're trying to change America. I get angry at what they're trying to do to our kids, especially since I have a three year old and a five year old. It, it hits home with me. But listen, we are out of time for uh, today's program. Once again, I, I've got to do this at the end of the end of the show as well. Um, we have our fundraising update. It's our end of year fundraiser. We're trying to raise $40,000. And 
which is about half of what we have in some other um, fundraisers. But for some reason, the economy is hurting everybody. And so we've been doing this for a few weeks now, and we've raised $1,673. We have such a crazy long way to go. And we need to stay on the PTL Club. We need to stay on Roku and Apple TV. We, we, we have to continue doing what we're doing. We can't take a step back in this, this, these critical hours in American history. We cannot take a step back. But we are 100% funded by our viewers. So, and, 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 and hear me out. Josh is not getting rich. I am not getting rich. It just takes a lot to move this thing forward every week. We need your help. We have, well, we have nearly, we have just over thirty-seven or $38,000 left to raise the next five weeks. Get involved. You can go online to ZachDrewShow.com and click that bright orange donate button. And you can either give there through PayPal or Tithely, which is the Christian uh, payment service. You can also write us the old-fashioned way. Send it to Zach Drew Show, P.O. Box 797, Decatur, Illinois, 62525. Or you can call us at 888-459-5727. Once again, that's 888-459-5727. And whenever you do go to ZachDrewShow.com, you can also click on the store. Uh, this wasn't this doesn't have to do with the fundraiser, but those that belong to the Paul Revere Club and they and they receive the Paul Revere Report that we send out on a monthly basis, they're really liking it. Like they really like these in-depth show breakdowns, all of the additional content um, that's being sent to them on a monthly basis, and your new show called Peck Perspective. That is that is a member exclusive. You can only watch this program by being a member of the Paul Revere Club for a donation of $30 each month. And it is an internet uh, only club. So we will send the Paul Revere report every month at the first of the month to your email that you put on file. So sign up for that or get a, get a bag of coffee on our store. But listen, I hope you have a wonderful Thanksgiving and we will see you all next week. In a world where information is everywhere, how can we separate the signal from the noise? Introducing the Paul Revere Club, your one-stop destination for breaking news, current events, and cutting-edge coverage of the latest developments in science, technology, politics, and so much more. Signing up for the Paul Revere Club has never been easier or more affordable. For a monthly donation of only $30, you can unlock a world of knowledge at your fingertips. Simply call our toll-free number, 888-459-5727, and tell our operators you would like to join the Paul Revere Club. Or go to ZachDrewShow.com, click on the IGBY store, click the Paul Revere Club icon, and sign up today.